Hi, this is Gershon Wolf and welcome to Modern Music Composition. So, I got to thinking. In the last video, when I introduced set theory to you, I was talking about, and talking about modes, um, we used the exact same notes for every single mode. All I did was do inversions on each one of those scales to get to the next mode. So, I didn't want you to get the impression that for example, set class 735, which is 0, 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 10, those particular tones, um, are only associated with those particular notes um, that I talked about in the last example, and that would be the C major scale, the C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, and then it's relative minor, which has the exact same um, notes in it, and then certainly all the modes that are associated with that uh, and, and like I said, the way I created each one of those modes was through inversion, so it kept and preserved the same notes. So, I want to, I put to, this video together specifically to explain that that's not the case. Set 735 is not just associated with tones that are the same and different permutations of them. So, I put together this example. This was from the previous video where we had the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. But remember, this set class is an abstraction, so let's be abstract. Let's take and rotate this clock one semitone notch counterclockwise. Well, when we do that, and by the way, we're keeping set class 735 preserved. We're rotating each one of those tones a, semi a, a, a semitone. When we do that, we end up with this diagram. So this note gets rotated to, to C um, sharp, C gets rotated to B, B gets rotated to A sharp, A gets rotated to G sharp, G gets rotated to F sharp, and F gets rotated to E. <clears throat> when we do that, we end up with this representation. And what this represents actually is the B major scale. By rotating our set class 735 one semitone counterclockwise, we've now created the seven tones of the B major scale. And I've written that out here. B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. And we preserved the set class 735. So that's what I wanted to say about that. I wanted to make that clear with respect to any diatonic scale within the circle of fifths. All 12 major and 12 minor fall into this particular set class. Now, I just thought of something. Um, it also works with inversions. Here's something. Let's take and keep this idea and we're just going to invert this set with respect to the vertical axis here. So with respect to this axis, suppose you've got a disc and here's your disc, and you just rotate it 180 degrees like this. So take a coin and rotate that coin 180 degrees. And let's map out where set class 735 ends up. This is a certain type of inversion. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna keep the notes the same because they don't change. So if we rotate this guy 180 degrees like that, that means that, and I'm going to write it in red, that means that C sharp, this guy goes over to B, but B goes over to C sharp. So in a sense, that's somewhat preserved. A sharp, however, goes to D. D sharp rotates over to A. G sharp goes to E, but then E goes to G sharp. 
and F sharp stays the same because we've rotated on this axis. So F sharp and C don't change. Well, what have we produced here? Um, A, B, C sharp, F sharp, G sharp. We produced A major. So in going from here, let me keep the same colors as I did last time. Now we're headed this direction. And what we've done is we've done an inversion. And we've created A major. Well, that's kind of cool because now you can start thinking about a composition and some relationships within that composition are sitting right here in front of you. We went from C major, we rotated one semitone, took us to B major. From B major, we did an inversion and we produced the A major scale. Let me just write that out for you so we've got that. This is not A minor, this is A major. So A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. Oops. Sharp. <clears throat> well, that's kind of interesting because now you could think about, let's think about the circle of fifths. Okay? Here. I'm going to erase this side now because you've got a picture of that on your screen. And I'm going to show you something about how I think about symmetry. Okay? Let's draw the circle of fists. I always start off with my quarters so I can get a decent something or other. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, D flat, A flat, E flat, B major, F major. I'm not going to write the, the minors because um, right now I'm just thinking about some symmetry in my mind. We have here an A major that we created in our process. We had our B and we started with C. But I'm going to just highlight C because I may not use C. I just like the idea that I took um, a particular uh, scale, I did an inversion on it, and I, I ended up with these two. Well, if I look at the circle of fifths and I want to think about some type of balance of symmetry, associated with it. What I want to do is I'm going to draw an axis through B and E. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. When I draw an axis through B and E, now I'm going to circle B. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is B flat. <laughs> it's a good thing I caught that. Details. Details, details, B, flat. Okay, so I'm just going to circle B, flat. I was thinking there's two Bs, that's impossible. Okay, well, now we've got some coolness here with respect to some inversions that we can do just in your mind with respect to now the circle of fists. Here's some symmetry. We've got B, A, and B flat major, and you can create a composition with this. You could, in your composition, use B major, A major, and B flat major in your composition, and in fact, you can make it as complicated as you want, but what I like to do in compositions is I like to put some constraints in because there's so many things you can do. I mean, it's like going to the kitchen and creating a new recipe. 
you got to keep keep some constraints. You want to keep only a certain number of ingredients and certain amounts of those ingredients. Because if you've got thousands or millions of ingredients and all different kinds of variation with amounts to them, it's going to be tough coming up with something. So constraints are important. So um, what, what, what I would do with this was I, I would create some type of, of uh, composition, uh, understand some type of form that we'll, we'll be talking about form. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I just start, wanted you to start thinking about things in this manner in terms of symmetry. Um, you've got B, A, and B flat. The next thing you could do is flip it on... You would flip it on this axis here, where you flip it over like that, where now you've got, and I'm going to draw it in a different color, E, F, and E. So now you got E major, E flat major, and F. Well, I don't know about you, but I can start to see some similarities here. E flat, E. B flat, B. So, you can think of a wonderful composition with respect to this using properties from all these major scales. So, there you have it. You can now create some type of composition based on symmetry relations here where we generated those symmetry relations knowing about a particular set class. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, doing some operations with respect to um, our, our graphing here of the chromatic scale in circular form. So that's it for today, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.